Well, friendly hellos. Welcome to the first allocator call taking place on September 17th. On this agenda, what we're going to rehash is introducing the Dev Summit taking place at Phil Plus Day in Bangkok in November. We'll highlight the link for all of the sessions if you're keen to apply live. The bulk of the call will focus on, on the two areas. The first is the data cap refresh, checking in with everybody who had a second and third round. Go over some of the lessons learned that we saw as some of the common traits that are coming up in these so everyone can benefit from the examples. And then check in on new allocator applications. Kind of see what we're seeing as far as who these applications are. Kind of get a pulse from the community on prioritization for onboarding versus some of the other things that we have in the queue. We also have two proposals that are open, 125 and 137. We'll check in on these so everyone has a chance to give their input and next steps. And then as far as frequently asked and tooling, we'll check in on removing data cap from a client if this should happen to you for an allocation. We'll talk about violations. So if data cap is not distributed adequately, what does that process look like for removing allocators and what are the standards held to? And last, just give you an update on refreshes to the website to make the client experience a little bit easier. So as always, if you have questions, feel free to stick a hand up. The chat will be monitored by Galen and myself. And we'll have plenty of the time at the end of the call. It is the Autumn Festival taking place, so I anticipate a limited number of folks joining this call live. So this video will be available on YouTube as we go forward. Today is the 17th of September. This is the first call at 0900-1600 UTC. Next call will be taking place at 02. And the next call will be on October 1st. As a check-in on metrics, we sell 12 new clients. Applications get processed over the last two weeks, which was 20 petabytes that went out. We're seeing around active notary, excuse me, allocators in the program still hovering right around that 50 mark. All right. Hey, Phil Plus Day and the Dev Summit taking place in Bangkok. So the tentative dates looking at right now is December 6th through the 8th. The Phil Plus Day will land somewhere in that time frame, either the 6th, 7th, or 8th. We'll keep you posted as we receive our official time slot. And some of the content that the teams are looking at right now revolves around working groups. So if you've come or you've watched some of the sessions in the past, it could be Galen, Deep, Marta, anybody who's like leading on the team, kind of talking about high-level vision, answering high-level questions. The goal for this Dev Summit is to really break it down into working groups and roundtable and make it a lot more tactical. So a lot of the conversations around tooling and showcasing what's in development, what are the needs that we're hearing from SPs, clients, and allocators, and conversations with allocators. What's working well? What should we focus on in roadmaps coming up in 24, 25? And then standards for the program, making sure that as we move forward and develop, we're keeping the documentation flow on that. So Summit is a great way to get involved. We're still looking at the recordings for this. We're going to bias towards live, but we're looking at can we have some type of recording for those of you that aren't in the room, probably not live, but to have a way to go back and capture this. And we're really going to make an emphasis effort on documentation. So if you don't want to watch six hours of meeting sessions, you can read all of the note highlights. So look for that. The link is right here in the slides if you're keen to attend or have any more questions and we'll get back for anything you need. All right, data cap refresh. So I think it was 13 allocators are receiving their root key holder data cap top off right now. And we have two, four, six, seven new allocators that are coming back in the last couple of days. So CC Phil, Genesis, CloudX, Byte-based DStore, Top Tool, Venus, and non-entropy. What we're doing right now is we're working through those applications to start getting those processes set up. So if you haven't seen it already, some of those have started to receive a tag. And the kind of flow that you'll see as this goes through is that it will receive comments after you file the application for refresh from either the community or the Phil Watchdog who's looking at all the metrics that go behind this. So once that Phil Watchdog posts a comment, they'll kind of share retrieval, they'll share SP locations, They'll share any questions on the applications that were kind of flagged. And this is meant to be a public and open conversation. So if you were an allocator, what you'll see is in the registry in the governance repo, there'll be a tag listed next to each one of these applications. So it will go from awaiting governance or watchdog comment, and you'll see now awaiting response from allocator. And that's again, designed to give allocators a chance to address anything that might've come up in the watchdog, 
before it moves on to the final review from the governance team and the root key holders. So you seven should start to see those watchdog comments come through. Please go ahead and leave your feedback. And then the next steps will be for governance to leave the next comment on what the final findings were before it goes to review. Galen, yeah, floor is yours. Sorry, I uh, wanted to catch this and then had to find the unmute button, apologies. Um, this was a, a, a thing that was brought up um, maybe last week or two weeks ago in one of the conversations was around, uh, we would like to see allocators opening um, these issues uh, for their own pathway um, where they're presenting the evidence and the diligence. We've been working on creating templates for it. However, a thing to call out if you open a diligence review before you have used 75% of your um, data cap allowance, uh, then it's going to slow the process down. You have not used enough for there to be enough evidence for us to go look at. Um, we've just kind of always had a standard of wanting that funnel to flow at a certain rate. Um, and that rate is 75% of the previous. Um, if you open it too early, it's just going to either create confusion where we then need to close that issue and open another one later or open the issue again at the appropriate time. But then all of the data is going to be different because you'll have different retrieval amounts, different onboarding amounts. Um, so do yourself and the governance team a favor. Don't open a um, kind of compliance review audit and a request for more data cap too early, um, or it's just going to lead to, to more headache for everyone. So that's one thing that I have to say on that. But yes, we, we are working on adding some new labels um, so that we can try and track those SLAs that came from the community. Um, and we'll see how that goes. And I think uh, um, we'll, we'll be excited to, to do this next batch of audits. Yeah. Great point, Galen. Thank you. So let's talk about what kind of things we saw in that audit so everyone can kind of benefit. So I have some bullet point lists hoping to turn this into a conversation, and you'll see a lot of real detailed notes that Galen left in the applications on each one of these topics. So the first one that we've seen is allocators not following up to make sure that the SPs and clients were in compliance. So what we've seen is like the data cap goes out the door, but there's really no follow-up verification on what's taking place. So as a reminder, the role of the allocator is not just to allocate the data cap, but serve as the steward for that data cap once it goes out. So checking in and having a regular conversation with these clients is gonna be critical as more and more data cap goes out. So just as a reminder, it's not a fire and forget once the data cap's been allocated, it's ensuring that the clients are using and storing that data cap within the program guidelines and asking for what they need. The second thing we saw in a few of these applications is duplicate requests from the same client. This has been seen in some allocators that might have two pathways or some allocators that are just seeing an application come through multiple times. So as a refresh and as a reminder, if you are one of these allocators that's setting up two pathways to be running, be very mindful that if you're just processing the same application across both pathways, That'll be a big flag and that will result in either throttling or a lot of explanations as it goes through. So a simple way to alleviate that is if for any reason you are seeing the same organization client apply, be very, very upfront in the communications in your repo and documentation on what the reason for and how that's being tracked. Otherwise, again, it can result in throttling or at least delays as that gets processed by the governance. Three is we're seeing a lot of use by VPNs, which if you remember from your application question, this is one of the issues that was asked. It's how will you work with VPNs and how will you track that? So a lot of the organizations that we saw had a high number of VPN usage, which isn't in itself a problem, but if it comes back that we can't verify the SPs or we're seeing this for certain regions, it can quickly become a problem. So be very mindful as you're working with the SPs and the clients that you're making a clear documentation on what's going on with these locations and how does that line up with how you structured your business plan to allocate that data. And the fourth was kind of surprising. 
it's some fields missing in the client application. So if client applies for the data cap, they fill out an application to you, the allocator requesting that data cap, and some of the fields will be blank. Now, obviously not every client needs to fill out every question you may have in your data preparation form, but there were some blaring examples of missing information on like location or replicas, or just you can amuse your imagination on what's missing. So as that audit drills down from retrieval to location, one of the things that governance is looking at is like, cool, did this client actually fill this out? And did the allocator keep track? So if the client is just going through and using like a template form and skipping a lot of information and it's getting processed by the allocators, it's starting to be called out. So be very mindful that if a client is missing that information, it can be as simple in the bookkeeping repo as, hey, can you please give me an answer to number seven on where the locations will be or where the data comes from? Without these, again, it can result in slowdowns at best or throttling at worst. So I'll pause, we'll take a look at chat and open up the floor if anybody has any thoughts or Galen, if you had any additional comments after your, your audit. Not seeing um, anything in the chat. I think you touched on big bullets. Um, yeah, we asked a lot of questions in the application. A lot of times we ask the question around VPNs um, because we understand there are reasonable use cases for an SP or a client using a VPN. Um, there are some tools available to us currently to check whether or not it's a VPN. Uh, those tools are not perfect. That's part of the point of using a VPN, right, is to, to anonymize that location. Um, but if we see certain trends, then that you know, increases some um, confidence that a VPN is in use. Um, but the biggest thing is in the allocator applications, it was stated, if, are you going to ask? Are you going to ask your clients about their SPs? And are you going to then do any additional KYB or diligence if they are using a VPN? Um, and if so, where will you track that? And what will that information be? Because again, the thing that we want to know is, real data, real client, real distributed deal making. If it is all going to one geopolitical location, if it is all going to one physical location, if it is all going to one SP, um, those are not in keeping with this type of program. And then each allocator had their own set of, well, how many replicas, how much distribution, how many different SPs. Um, and so we, you know, when we go do these audits, when we look at the uh, reports and we see the SP listing and we see where their ISP is pinging. Um, it asks the question, is there evidence that the allocator is asking about this? So find other ways to show the governance team and to show the community that you are doing the KYB, the know your business, um, KYSP, know your SP. Um, that you kind of listed in the application that you would require. Um, around the multiple sort of duplicate applications, I think this also, this is maybe similar but different to a question that came up in the chat. So maybe if we have uh, a little bit of time, we could touch on that now. Um, in the chat, uh, Mike asked, you know, he has a client that applied to multiple different allocator pathways. Um, the issue that we that K Ray is mentioning here is, you know, an allocator that is running multiple pathways, having the same client across that those multiple pathways by that same allocator. So these are similar but different situations, right? Um, talking about the one on the bullet points here, if a client shows up in this ecosystem with a data set and applies to a whole bunch of different allocators because they want to make sure they're getting a lot of data cap. Um, that might be a reasonable thing. There's a couple of things that we would love to see from a diligence standpoint. Is the allocator checking? Is the allocator asking them, Have you? are you working with other people? Is the client telling the truth? Is it the same data set? 
that's showing up across? Does it meet the requirements of the different allocators? And then have the allocators communicate, have the allocators say, hey, you know, hey, 1475, I see that you're working with this client. You've given them two allocations. Are you like, are you happy with them? Do you think they need more data cap? Um, there is a chance that this a client that has, you know, great data preparation, a great data set could be a fit for multiple pathways. Um, that's also why we are taking steps to decrease some of this redundancy by not approving more new manual pathways, right? The more of those manual pathways that are that have the same requirements, um, the more kind of confusing redundancy we have in the system. There's sort of a limit to how much of that redundancy we need. Um, and that's one of the reasons we've been, you know, prioritizing these compliance reviews and the tooling more so than approving um, a bunch of new pathways. So the thing we want to see, ask the question, you know, make it clear and transparent in public. What are, do you feel confident giving them a first allocation? And then if they are getting an allocation from you as well as other um, allocators, and sort of onboarding all of it at the same time to the same set of SPs, again, that feels like a redundant um, behavior. And it seems like that is a is not ideal. Because part of the goal of this is that, you know, we give a little bit of trust, we allow them to make deals, and then we verify that trust, and then we extend more trust. If somebody as a client is applying to a lot of allocators with the same application, getting a lot of those first allocations of data cap or even first, second, and third. Um, that means that they may be kind of not necessarily abusing, but they're taking advantage of a gray area. Um, so it's a bit of a flag. It's not necessarily an immediate violation. But I think the biggest thing is asking the questions, performing that diligence, getting a reasonable justification. Um, we have yet to see clients that are really at the scale of onboarding, you know, such massive amounts of, of deals at a time that are real and verified and non-duplicate um, distinct deals. Um, and so that also is one of the reasons why we feel that these throttles make sense because the tooling, the data preparation, the data distribution tools are not necessarily there um, for somebody to be onboarding PIBs of data you know, every week. And so if somebody's applying to six different pathways um, with the exact same identical set of data, then maybe what they're doing is saying, I'm going to do one copy from this person, but then they should only be asking for a small amount of data cap. And that might be reasonable. Um, shifting gears now to the question that came up in the chat that was posted um, in the governance call around, or that's, sorry, that's that's that situation where uh, a client is applying to like multiple different allocator pathways across different teams. Um, going to the one here around an allocator proving duplicates, if you are running multiple pathways, you want to be really mindful of somebody applying to your two pathways and keeping those work streams separate. Um, for example, the Fiddle team has multiple pathways. One of those pathways specializes in public open data. One of them specializes in enterprise data. Um, they're also working on one that specializes in Gitcoin um, auto verification. They have separate requirements and they need to keep those work streams separate and isolated so that they don't give data cap from the let's say the enterprise data set address, they don't want to give that to a project that says they're doing public open data. Um, so it's important to have a reason for working with the same client across your multiple pathways. If you're running something that specializes in, you know, only web three data, and then the same client shows up and works with that and says, I have web three data, this is what it is, and here's an application. And then you also have a pathway for you know, public open web to scientific data sets. If the same client applies to you, but they have a different data set, that could be reasonable, right? And you would want to show evidence. You know, I worked with this client over here. They're a data preparer. This is what they claimed. This is how I checked their data. They started onboarding this data. It looks accurate and correct. They applied with a different data set and it meets this other pathway more. 
So I'm going to use this public open pathway for that. So again, it's all about, you know, what is the, what is the public diligence to prove that it's a real client with real data doing real distributed deal making that matches your allocator specified requirements. Um, so I'm going to see in the chat, I'm going to see if Mike, if that uh, addresses your question that you posted to help explain the kind of those two different situations. I don't see a, a hand or a chat. So for now, uh, Kerry, let's kick it back to you. And then if we have more time at the end, we can discuss this more. Rock. So allocator applications, initial and applying. So Adam, I think this will apply to you and then we'll kind of circle back. So what we saw in previous elections was that we had fixed times where people could join the program and then turn in their applications going forward. What Fiddle has developed is a tooling set where those applications can roll in at any time. One of the downsides to this is as these applications roll on, there's a trade-off between onboarding these new pathways and supporting the existing pathways. So Galen kind of highlighted on this, right now there's 50 manual pathways that are all receiving support from the governance team and tooling that Fiddle is creating. So small examples on this would be like changes to bookkeeping repo, loss ledgers and re-signing, getting new people added to GitHub, then the onboarding KYC, the data cap on checks and diligence. So there's very much a lot that goes into it. So the priority on time served for the governance team and tooling has been focused on supporting the existing allocators that are going through. And with that, a request for pathways that are doing something unique that isn't being just done manually. And so with those manual pathways, there's right around 50 of them that anybody, whether it's school data, crime data, open source data, can then apply to these pathways. So what we've said is we are going to get to these as it becomes critical to onboard for the success of the program less on board for the benefit of the allocator organization that's wishing to join. Should there be a client that doesn't have their needs met versus one of the current pathways, then that's what we're looking to set up. So if you are a new allocator that's looking to apply to the program or whether you're an allocator that was removed for a diligence violation or inactivity and you're wishing to come back, one of the action items for you is one, come to these calls. Adam, thank you for being here today. Thank you for being active in GitHub. It is great to communicate and see those responses come back. But one of the things to look at is how is your pathway different than the other 50 pathways that are currently being served? And if it's exactly the same, one of the things you can do is look at like, well, how can I show either participation or ways to make this program better? So there's great suggestions like, hey, I built a bot that runs off WeChat for filing this claim, or I have some type of system. Otherwise, what we're going to look at doing is once we have all the websites up, once we have all of these refresh granted and we have a set of allocators who are operating within the program that are doing their diligence, then we can look at does it make sense to bring on new manual pathways to fill the needs but to answer some of the questions that have come through in Slack, there's no number. It's not like we're looking at this where one allocator drops off. So therefore we bring on one new applicant as far as the time commitment. So again, I'll be following up in the issues. Adam, I know that you're very keen to join and bring on the educational data. So I'll follow up with that application on ways that maybe we could brainstorm some ways that can make that a little bit easier. So we're not just duplicating that same pathway. But just to check in, this is why some of these new applicants with a manual pathway have not been onboarded because there's just not a business need to justify that with current tempo. So I'll pause and see if anybody has any thoughts or comments on that. All right. There are two open proposals and discussions. Thank you so much for those of you that have left comments on them. So I just wanted to check in. 
Issue number 137, this was filed by MD Labs. And what we're looking to do with this one is provide allocators, SP clients, more of a general timeline that they could expect to see their data cap refresh. So as Galen mentioned, the goal is that once you've reached that 75% distribution, 70% distribution, that you can self-submit, hey, here is all of my deal making. This is all the stats that goes on to it. And you'll file that request in GitHub. And the goal is over the next two weeks, several things will happen. The first is that the community and the watchdogs are all open and invited to look at your publicly accessible data and leave comments and questions. This gives you the opportunity as the allocator to address those comments and questions, provide any other relevant information that might not be readily available. And then what happens is the governance team will go through and collect all of that. So all of the bookkeeping, all of the application data, all the storage data, it's all looked at. And then Galen will post a comment based off the findings of that. It'll usually have an action item for the organization either simply to confirm that you'd wish to receive a top off or a doubling, or if there was an issue found, highlighting what that issue was, then looking for confirmation that the allocator is aware of that and taking steps to address it before receiving another dead cap. That whole process right now seems to be hovering at like the three week mark for everything to happen. And this really comes down to when those applications get received. So what we're doing is we're working to make that timeline a lot shorter, whether it's tooling, tags, or just the rate that the governance team comes back. So you should see this window drastically get shorter and shorter and shorter as the program has time to develop, find its legs, and put these systems in place. So we'll close out 137 once we get to that two-week mark. I'm pretty optimistic that we'll hit that sometime by the end of September. And then that means that any allocators that are coming forward can expect to have that data cap refresh from the time they submit to getting that root key holder top off within that two weeks. So I'll pause and see if anybody has any thoughts on ways to improve this process or this issue that's open as it is. Fuck. KZ filed this issue 125, and what this has to do with is the default questions that come up in the data prep. So the goal of this is to ensure that the data preparation is not creating more work, but still capturing the information that needs to be seen. And so the Fiddle pathway is running. I think they have almost a dozen or more applications that they've gone through. So a lot of lessons learned on their part on what makes good questions that they come through without adding to that, you know, duplication of data just for data's sake. So you'll see in this proposal some of the questions that I've highlighted here in this slide, and it has to do with that verification piece. So this is going to be remaining open for the next couple of days. If you have any feedback on, is this too much? Is this too little? A lot of great insights so far, and then we'll be looking at incorporating this in. So this might serve as like a last call. If you haven't seen 125, this is the call to action to go review and leave feedback and we can make sure that these questions tailor to you. All right, we had some great questions come through in both the GitHub repo and Slack. So rather than force you to read you know, dozens and dozens of Slack messages and repos, we're hoping to dispel some of the biggest ones for your awareness. And the first one came from, I believe this was Venus, and what they were saying was, hey, what we've noticed is that we've issued this data cap to clients, and for whatever reason, that client didn't work within the GORMs. How do we distance ourselves as an allocator from that data cap that went out to the client? And really what this boils down to is how is data cap removed from a client? So two points on this one. What you'll see now is in the allocator registry GitHub, you'll see published after this call, a new template, just like changing your bookkeeping repo or your address. And in that template, an allocator requests a removal of data cap from the client. The information we'll be looking from you, the allocator, is what is the reason why? What was the address? What steps did you take? And where can we find all the communication that goes back? Once that's done, then on the back end, the governance or the root key holders can then go through and remove that data cap from the client. I will leave a caveat, though. It can't be removed by an amount. So if you've issued you know, 500 TIBs, we can't pull back 250. We have to take it all from the client. So this is where that diligence and communication really plays to the strengths of the allocator 
versus relying on after the fact to get that out. What you'll see coming in early October is developments in the tooling for smart contracts. And what's nice about the smart contracts is it will make that automation and removal much simpler. So again, if you're an allocator and you find that the clients are not meeting that data prepared standards that they told you that they would, and the data cap has been issued, we recommend you don't wait until the final steps of the audit for us to find this issue. The best way is if you see this happening and you want to flag, fill this template out, and I'll push those steps into Slack and the documentation once they go live. I'll pause and see if anybody has any questions or if this has happened to anybody on the call. All right, and the last, we talked about this on the last week's call, as far as the difference between having a business model that's financially incentive for allocators, SPN clients, versus filling out an application, getting data cap under false pretenses, and then selling it back. So where we've seen this observed, we've messaged that allocator, hey, we've kind of seen this, do you have any questions? And the goal of this is to give that allocator a private chance to kind of address anything before making it into a larger issue. If we haven't received a reply back, what you'll see is a proposal filed for me just saying, hey, we've seen this activity take place. This is now a public chance for you to verify that and provide any details on why this is taking. And if we don't have a sufficient response from that, that allocator will be sunset into the alumni section and have their data cap frozen and will have to re-come back or be removed from the program. So as a reminder, that data cap should be going to very specific clients that requested it, not just stored up by the allocator, which then can be distributed without the program norms. So you'll see that in your proposal and you'll see that data cap rescinded. So I know that we have just a few people on the call, so I'll also post this in Slack for any async. If you haven't checked out the fill.org Filecoin Plus site, I recommend you do so. The link's in the slides as well as here in the chat. And what this is right now is a lot of information on how the program works. What we're working on for the next iteration is how clients can discover the Fill Plus program and connect with allocators as they go through it. So what we're creating is a board that everyone who wants to apply to become and be matched with an allocator can then view all of you and see the attributes. How many storage copies, what's retrieval look like, location, what do you specialize in? So we're putting that together in a draft what I'll be asking for from each allocator that wishes to have it is a short bio, something like we've been in business for this long, we specialize in this data. Otherwise, what I'll be doing is pulling that information from your allocator application that was filed from November to February and posting that in. So you should see a DM coming for me in the coming days, and then that will pull that. And then what we'll work on in the future is have this website pull specifically from your JSON so if you want to update this, you won't have to send me a Slack message, wait for me to incorporate that. You can modify your JSON. So look for this in the coming days and weeks. As a quick reminder, you'll see that website list the allocators that are on it. If you want to provide additional information, bio, organization, snapshot that they want to know, please let us know. And in the future, we'll have a way for you to update this automatically as a way to better match you with clients. So with that, I'll pause and see if there's any topics or any specifics that anyone on the call would like to dive into. All right, looking at chat, Lily, I see your comment. Do not support discussion 125. So let me just go back to that slide and if there's anything that comes up here. So if you don't support it, feel free to come in here or feel free to put in chat and we'll relay this onto the team. Is it too much workload for the clients and yourself to look at these? Do you feel like this doesn't meet the helpful standards for you to look at this? So any tactical things you have, let us know either in chat on this call or in the issue, and we'll be happy to dive into it. Adam, I see your comment in chat about the allocator pathway that you're hoping to onboard. 
feel free to unmute and have a conversation, or I see that we have a thread. I think my question for you on issue 171 is, so you're specializing in this education data. So as you stand up this new allocator pathway that's manual, that's reviewing this data, what will you do that's currently not being done or not able to be done by the existing allocators? I think that's the differentiation that we're looking for in something like that. Because as it stands right now, whether it's NOAA data, whether it's AWS, whatever it may be on that data set, the steps should be the same for the manual allocation to look at who they are, do the KYC, how it helps. What specific difference are you doing in this pathway that's not being met by the other allocators? The best thing is to put that in the issue 71 that you filed or really spell that out. Because as it stands right now, it's very hard to determine what benefit that this new allocator pathway will bring that's not already being brought. What do you know about education data and how will you prepare it differently than it's not being done right now? I'm gonna pull up 125. Mike, thanks for flagging this as far as the Spark verification. Let me get it here off screen so I'm not just bombarding you with this. So this is 125, and this is the data prep questions that we file. This has been open for around six weeks, started from KZ, and he kind of starts with the background as far as like, what are we seeing with this? And he kind of highlights some of the same questions that we saw on the slide. So Mike, I'm going to scroll down to some of the new topics that we saw, and this is some of the feedback that we've got. It's that, hey, it's more of a hassle and makes storing data more complicated, could be overly complex workflow for the clients and the SPs, and that it could be problems with retrieval. So these are great. I think one of the things that KZ was highlighting in this as it came through was that, look, we're gonna have to go through and answer a lot of these questions regardless. So whether it happens in the data prep side or whether it happens on the diligence side later, what can we do on this one? So I wanna get more feedback. Galen, if you have any thoughts on this, Marta, if you're still on the call, if you have any thoughts on this, happy to add into it or happy to add to this discussion for it. Yeah, I would love for people that are outright blocking it to make alternative proposals. Um, I think that we have to understand how clients, if they have real data, are preparing their data. They sh that should not be a difficult ask. Um, if this is a person that has terabytes of data, then they know how to answer these questions. They are working in an industry where this, like, this is their job. They understand how to, how their data is architected. Um, I think that just assuming that this is like more hassle, again, goes back to this idea that we are trying to build a enterprise level data storage layer. This is not just about you know, mining a cryptocurrency. That's not what Filecoin is. It is about a data storage layer. If it's Web3 data, they should understand how they are generating, packaging, preparing, indexing that data so that they can access it in the future. If it's public open scientific data, that data has been prepared in some way from where it was created and and then turned into car files to be able to be onboarded. It's not unreasonable to need more information from the person who is bringing that data to the network. Um, so then my pushback again, if you are an allocator, if you think that this is overhead, then how do we make the questions lightweight while getting at the information we need. In any enterprise industry where you are running a high scale legitimate business, again, we're talking terabytes, petabytes, exabytes of data. This isn't this isn't like Frank who made an NFT one time and doesn't know what IPFS is. Like that's not what we're talking about here. 
um, we're talking about hot, large scale data development. Um, and it is reasonable for those people to both expect that they will be asked these questions that again, grants them more confidence that they are working with professionals who understand their needs, uh, as well as for us to ask those questions to show to the public that we understand the requirements of this industry. So if your pushback is, you know, this is, this is more work for our clients, then make it lightweight while getting at the same information. What is a shorter question that we can ask? And this goes to back to the allocators. In the applications, allocators would claim, we're going to check data in this way. We're going to perform these diligence checks to know that it is a real client, real data, real distribution. How do you know it's real data if you don't have any way to investigate it? It's very easy for anyone to show up and say, here's five files and you can open those five files because they're readily downloadable hosted files. And you need to trust me that because I can show you those five files, I actually have 50,000 additional unique copies. That's not a reasonable assumption. That's not a safe assumption, right? So if someone can't answer questions about how their data is prepared, then they probably are not ready to be onboarding at that scale because they probably are not a legitimate data preparer or client data owner. All right, everybody. Well, as always, thank you. I'll be taking these videos and posting them to YouTube after the second call and some of the call to actions for the website and comments, I'll reply back for Mike, your thread, Adam, yours, and you'll see this posted in the docs as we go forward. As always, thank you everyone for your time. Be online if you need us. Cheers, everyone. Friendly hellos, welcome back to the second allocator call taking place September 17th. This will be a mirror of the morning session. So let's see what we have on the agenda. First, just kind of keeping you guys updated, Phil Plus Day is coming up in November. Kind of highlight a little bit about what to expect for that and give you a heads up if you are keen to attend live. The majority of the call, we're going to kind of focus on two main areas, three actually, but the first two will be the data cap refresh, any questions you have on that process, how it's going and what's happening next, as well as any allocators that wish to return or organizations that wish to apply and kind of what to expect with next timelines and everything that goes along with that. There's two proposals. We'll talk about those two proposals. And everything else will just be making sure that you're aware of any kind of communications and any questions you may have. Lots of time at the end of the call, and I expect very low attendance due to the festival taking place today. All right, so this call is on September 17th. Just for your schedules, next one takes place on October 1st, 1600 UTC and 0200 UTC. A check in on metrics. So week over week, we just kind of take a look at what's been happening. There were 12 new clients that were served with 20 petabytes out the door. And this was results of about 50 allocators are active in the program right now. So we're still seeing on average around 12. Seems to be a good number for the number of applications that are received every two weeks, which results in that 50 petabytes of data. All right, Phil Plus Day. So this is the Phil Dev Summit taking place November 4th. 4th, 6th through the 8th in Bangkok. So if that's on your travel bucket list, please join us. The format for this will be far less presentation and much more tabletop and workshop format. So the big three that they're working the agendas around will be showcasing new tooling and what's coming down the pipeline for tooling, conversations with allocators, storage providers, clients, what's working well, what would you like to see coming, and then really defining what are the standards for the Phil Plus program. So that'll all be worked out. And the summit is meant to be, again, a gathering. We're still working the logistics with the AV teams if this event will have live broadcast or a recording after the fact. I'll pause and see if anybody has any questions on this dev summit. All right. 
So data cap refresh. So you guys that were in the latest round of reviews should have seen that all wrapped up. The way that you could tell is you should see the comments from Galen. So if you were an allocator that was awaiting any kind of data cap refresh and you've already had a comment, you should see that come through. There are seven new organizations that we're starting the work on the next round. So Genesis, see you on the call. ZZ Phil, CloudX, ByteBase, Top Pool, Venus, Non-Entropy. What we're doing right now is we're waiting for the watchdog and the community to leave a comments. Then governance team takes that, and then Galen will kind of summarize that in the response back. So once you've seen a comment from either the community or the Phil watchdog, strongly encourage you to go back in your application, provide any additional information that they may need. And you could tell, if you look in that screenshot there, waiting for response from allocators. So I'll go through and I'll tag those once the Phil watchdog or a community has left any comment. So if you need anything at all, that'd be the next step. And the most helpful is anything that the watchdog flags, if you provide an explanation of why that may be or what steps you've taken to address, that greatly increases the odds of a full data cap refresh limiting a throttle. So please ask away on any questions and the issue is the best place to do it or in the fill allocator Slack. Here's some lessons learned on what we saw with the past applications that went through. So we've talked about retrieval, we've talked about bookkeeping, I wanted to flag these four. These four were results of potential allocators being throttled or having much more information to fill out. So the first one is ensuring that your clients are doing the right thing with the data cap. So once the data cap goes out to the clients, it's the allocator's job to make sure that the applicant is who they say they are, what their data is, but also making sure that they're meeting the expectations on retrieval, on storage providers, on their data. So if a client is not doing those things and you've issued those data cap, the expectation is there should be no more data cap that's issued and that you're following up with those clients in a public forum. It could be WeChat as long as you're sharing that back so the public can see that. So again, making sure that you're keeping track of what the clients are doing with the data cap after distributed and not just continually running the faucet to refill. Number two, is some allocators have two pathways. So this could be an enterprise pathway, this could be a manual pathway, whatever it may be as it goes through. So making sure that if you have a pathway and a data applicant applies to one, and then to both, you're being very transparent. There were two organizations that had multiple pathways and they were servicing the same application without having any designation. So same data, same pathways, and that was a big no-no. So the way around that, if you should have it, is just leaving a comment in that bookkeeping repo from that client. Hey, I'm filling this request on this pathway. It is duplicate for these reasons. That's all you have to do to make sure that it's transparent and public and auditable. Number three was we saw a lot of VPN usage. Now in itself, that's okay. But what the issue was, was some of these allocators that were asking for the refresh very clearly stated in their application to join the program how they would work with VPNs and what their expectation would be of clients and storage providers using those VPNs. So Galen left a lot of comments about like, hey, this is what we're seeing with the VPN. This doesn't jive. So being very mindful, if you are working with clients, SPs that are doing heavy VPNs, making sure that you're transparent and listing that out there is going to be key for a fast refresh. And then four, we saw a lot of this, it was missing fields in the bookkeeping repos. So as the client was requesting data cap, they might fill out a 20 page, or excuse me, a 20 question page survey that you would have for them. Some of these surveys that you would have for the applicants had very minimal data. So that was a flag, because if we don't know where they're located or what they're doing with the data, how do you? And so a lot of additional information was, hey, why are we giving data cap to these applicants when these client questionnaires aren't even filled out? So just making sure that you're checking these four boxes with retrieval is just a great way to ensure that you're staying in compliance and doing right by the program. If any time you have questions, that allocator Slack, please, I encourage you, anything you want to ask, or feel free to leave it right there in your application or a refresh issue as you go back. So I'll kind of pause, Genesis, a few of you guys are on the call. If you have any questions now about your current data cap refresh or what's coming, please let us know. And just to make sure if I didn't say this already, 
we're working through these right now. So what we're doing is we're having the watchdog go through it, and I'm collecting these for Galen and kind of writing up the summaries. Then Galen is the decider for the governance on what is actually dispersed. So you should see lots of movement on this in the next coming days, waiting for the root key holder early next week. So I'll pause, check chat, hear for any questions you guys have. Batman, I see your question is Watchdog a governance contractor or part of Phil Plus team? So the contractor is not a specific like grant that's issued to the Watchdog. The Watchdog takes place, it's meant to be like a private account. It's not tied to the governance team. It's not a contractor. And it's meant to serve as that community liaison that's going back there. But no, it's not a contracted member of the foundation. If you do have feedback on them, though, Fat Man saying this, if you think that the posts that they're making are too long delayed or not hitting the right information, please share that feedback. Because what we are looking to do is turn that watchdog into tooling. And the goal of that is right now, you might have to wait three to four or five days for the watchdog to do a review, make all the posts. The goal is that we're working to automate all these refresh. So you don't have to wait for governance. You don't have to wait for watchdog. It's all metrics. It's all automated. And that's kind of what we're working towards. But in the meantime, yes, it's a human. Okay, allocator applications. This has had a lot of questions come up in the public Slack. So if you have any topics or anything you want to dig into, your time as we go through. On the last two calls, I've showed this slide. I've just kept it in here now. Essentially, you can apply to become an allocator anytime. There's no longer an elections. You can turn in a new application, but very similar to like a job site that is hiring. Right now, there are over 50 manual allocators that are performing well and dispersing the data cap. So there's not a very high need to onboard more manual allocators to that group of 50. And the reason why is it takes significant time, bandwidth, and review to not just review the applications and onboard the allocators, but then add them to the diligence reviews to go forward. So back in April, the decision was made to prioritize the existing allocator pool that we have or allocators or organizations that are doing something new or bringing something additional to the network. So this could be if an allocator is working on a pathway that uses WeChat to verify any kind of tooling that you're building, that goes the longest way. If we get these applications and it's just another manual check from a GitHub account that has no history and we know nothing about the organization, we're not prioritizing those. We're not saying no, but just like we have a hiring queue, we're focusing on the hiring for the highest value impact for the program. So I know that there might be some applicants that are waiting to come on board or they'd like to come on. The best advice I could give you is either if you want to stick with just a manual pathway like we're doing, as more allocators are removed for diligence violations for inactivity, we'll come back and draw from that pool to onboard those allocators. Or if you're building a pathway that's different, that has tooling, that's not just the manual, we will prioritize those and fast track to bring you on. So again, if you are applying for a manual allocator, I apologize. There's just a lot of manual allocators right now, and we're looking to onboard something else that's bringing value with that. So I'll pause and see if anybody has any questions impacted or would like to look at their application. Here for whatever you need. Cabrina, I see your message in chat. I know that we just started a Slack thread just about five minutes ago. What you'll need to do is I need to look into your organization. I apologize. I read your DM three minutes before we started this call. So I'm not really caught up on exactly what we did with Nuon Pathway, what happened. Feel free to follow up in our DM on Slack. Just send me the last diligence review and send me your organizational application and I'll dig into that a little bit. It really depends on what's going on and I'll be happy to help you. All right, just for your awareness, there are two proposals that are moving forward. They don't want to blindside. Number one is 137. This is hopefully a good proposal for everyone involved. 
And the goal of this proposal is to get the data cap refreshed down to as quick as possible. And what we want to do is make this a business for you. So if you're having to wait on a long bureaucracy that takes weeks for the data cap refresh, it doesn't work. So the goal that we're looking at is in the meantime, how do we keep that data cap refresh as close to two weeks, sub two weeks as possible. So what you see on the left is the flow of how it currently works. So an allocator submits an application to have their data cap refreshed. We then wait for community to comment and Phil Watchdog to comment. Once that's done, I collect all that information, synops it up for Galen, and Galen looks at everything. He looks at the bookkeeping repo, the retrieval, all the VPNs, all the communication, and then he gauges that on what is the value added and what are we bringing to the program. Then he'll leave you a comment. So if you are missing things and you need to work on getting it better, he'll throttle it. If we're going back and we're trying to make this, yeah, everything's good, we'll fast track it and you'll get the data cap doubled as it went out. So right now, this has been very choppy, very choppy, just because this is a new way of doing things. It's separate from the LDM that we've had and we've had some growing pains with how incredibly manual the process is. Once tooling catches this, this proposal should get much faster. So rather than being our goal of two weeks, ideally we get this down to two hours. You just turn in your proposal application, tooling runs it, and it will get back to you. But in the meantime, I wanted to check in. It's going to be about two weeks. If you have thoughts or comments, please leave them. And we're going to leave this issue open until we get it to that two-week timeline. And the second discussion that was filed, this came from KZ at Fiddle. And if you don't know, Fiddle runs an enterprise pathway. They onboard lots of data. And essentially, they found that with the current tooling that they had, if you're using the Fiddle tools, they were missing some information in their data prep. So the questions that were asked. So what Kevin was proposing in this discussion was these were the issues that he wished that were in the question up front to make it much easier for the data preparer to come back and look at this later. Please leave a note Feel free to unmute, leave a comment in chat. Some of the feedback that I've heard on this proposal is, yes, this may be helpful for some tooling, but this is also just one more step of bureaucracy and just one more hurdle that folks have to fill out. So if you feel that way, please leave an example in this proposal. And Galen made a comment this morning that I would leave with you. If you don't like these questions and you wanna see something else, What's super helpful is just to say, I don't like all these new questions. I wish we just asked this one or just give your feedback on it. This will go up to the fiddle team. And as they're building their tooling, this will push out and this will only impact you if you're using the governance and fiddle tooling for your data prep. So again, it's issue 125. This is probably looking for final discussion before it closes. If you have thoughts or feedback, please make it known. They'd love to get it. Right. Last section for you is the FAQ. The goal of this is sometimes there's a lot of communication on Slack, on GitHub, and you guys are busy, you're running organizations. Hopefully I can distill some of the most highly questionable so you don't have to read all those messages in GitHub to catch up. So here was the first one. The question was, during an audit, this allocator gave data cap to a client. And while they were waiting for their data cap refreshed, the allocator observed that the client wasn't acting within the parameters of their application. What do they do? So this could come up if you have a client that you've given data cap to and they have not met the requirements. If this happens, you can come into the allocator registry GitHub repository and starting tomorrow, you will see that there is a new pre-populated issue template and it will be that template to rescind data cap. All you'll have to do is fill out who was the client, link to the application, and why you want to remove that data cap. What we'll do is then on the back end, we'll coordinate with the root key holders to remove that. I'll just prep you up front. It won't be quick, but the benefit to you as an allocator is that way when it comes time for a re refresh review and it comes up that the client wasn't doing what they said they would, rather than you getting a ding for it, this is a way to say, look, I tried to do right. I tried to help them. They didn't do what they said they would do. I want this back off. So if you see that, you'll now see this GitHub issue. 
and this is designed to make it easier for the refresh. What Will at Fiddle wanted to point out is they've been working on smart contracts and that's getting ready to launch probably very early October. And once that launches, you as an allocator will have the ability to remove that data cap from your clients. So you won't even have to rely on root key holders or governments as middleman to get you through on that. So just wanted to make sure you were tracking. I will put this in Slack so that everyone can see it. And I'll kick off a proposal so everyone knows that this is out there. So just as an early ping, if you need to remove data cap, you should see an issue in the registry. And checking in on this, so what we've seen is some organizations would receive data cap, have a bank of the data cap that might not have been dispersed or for whatever reason, and rather than just holding it or having it rescinded, they began working towards selling it. Just wanted to make the distinction, selling data cap would be obtained incorrectly because data cap would be specific to the client. So if there was data cap that was available to be sold, it's outside the program guidelines and non-compliant. This does not mean that you cannot have a business model where you're acting as a broker or facilitating these client applications, but the data cap should only be flowing to the clients who apply. There shouldn't be a website where you just say, hey, give me X number of token and I will give you X number of data cap. That is not allowed. So if we see this kind of the flow is I will message that organization in a private DM. And I'll say something like, hey, we saw this. This is just you and I. Can you please explain this or help me understand what's going on? If we have clear communication, we'll work, we'll get this fixed. If we get no communication or it's a clear, blatant violation of the terms of service, what we'll do is we'll kick off a proposal and we'll remove that allocator from the program and we'll remove the data cap that was sent. So again, as a friendly check-in, I'll sell the data cap. And if you get a ping, let me know. Just trying to hear to help you guys as we go through it. And last, I'm sure you guys are scouring the internet, but just in case, if you go to fill.org backslash Filecoin plus, you will see that there is now a landing page dedicated to the Phil plus program. When we made the V1, we relied heavily on designing it for allocators. So how do you onboard? What are the documentation? What are the rules? How do you find out? What I'm working on right now is the documentation for how do clients find you. So they should be able to go to this website, a data applicant or a client, sort, and then find your organization and want to work with you. So I'm pulling information from your client applications, excuse me, your allocator applications, and I'm listing it here so they can see what region you operate, how many replicas, what are your retrieval requirements, how do they apply bookkeeping. If you would like to provide a bio, I will set up the steps to have this. I might just do it the easiest on Slack, so you could just DM me or reply to a thread. And this would be something like, hi, I'm Kevin, I'm with the foundation. I've been doing Phil Plus for 18 months and I'm happy to help you, whatever you wanna put. So if you're interested in having a bio listed, this is what clients will see when they come to find an allocator. And they can sort based off who's the best match to get you up. So you'll see this coming through. So with that, that's all new information that I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of and out in the public record. The forum is yours. Anything you want to talk about, anything you want to look at, I'm here for whatever you need. Just be one of those nights. Well, those of you that are waiting for a refresh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. If there's anything that you need. If you're waiting for an application, again, leave a comment, fill plus channel or DM me and I'll help get you. And Cabrina, if you want to follow up on our DM, I'll tell you what's going on with that pathway. And I'll help connect you. Anything else, the Phil Plus Allocator channel is the best for any tactical questions and whatever we could do to help. With that, thank you so much. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you guys soon. Cheers, everyone.